What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Climb Together podcast. I am your host, Tony Scorp, here with my host, my co-host, Deception the Rapper. Deception, say hi. What's up? This is episode 23 of the Climb Together podcast. The uh, What did you say, Deception, about two seconds ago? It's the Michael Jordan episode. It's 23. It is the Michael Jordan episode. Um, <laughs> I don't follow basketball, but some people do, so yeah. We'll call it good. Yeah, when it when it comes to when it comes to Michael Jordan at twenty three, you probably don't. You're probably glad you don't follow basketball. Well, I know who Michael Jordan is. I know that his number is twenty three. I know he's a really great basketball player. That's you about all I got. His number is twenty three. LeBron James. <gasps> dun dun. Bah! And the Michael Jordan versus LeBron James debate of who's the greatest basketball player of all time is can get very toxic. Well, we know that the greatest number in basketball of all time is 23 then. Right? Yeah. That makes sense. Even though, sadly, uh, LeBron won half of his championships with the number 6 and not the number 23. but Ah, Well, (laughs) half and half. Good enough. Number 6 is actually my, my favorite number, so I'll take it. You know? Yeah. That's crazy. That is awesome. Well, at least you know that LeBron James wore number six for a number of years. Well, it's actually my favorite number, so. Number six. Why is it my favorite number? Number six. Um, I'll tell you. Actually, I'm going to text you why. My favorite number. Oh, God. I made. Well. My favorite number was six, and then I made up this saying because my favorite number was six. Oh, God. There, I messaged, I sent it to you on, on, I I would say it on, I would say it on the podcast, but it's a little, it's a little not great. Oh, my God, that's actually, that's actually, that's, that's kind of nice. What am I saying? Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm funny like that. That's slick. Yeah. And did you said that definitely... to Riff? I said it to her, yeah. And she like <laughs> she looked at me and she said, You're done. <laughs> <laughs> she said, You're done. I said, What? I'm like, it's it, I mean, I did. I, I found I mean, I did it. Like I found, you know. <sighs> it's if you guys wanna know, ask me after the podcast off stream. <laughs> Maybe I'll answer you. And to to be fair, not Make even that to be a fair. Podcast question, but not really a podcast question. No, but honestly, I said that <laughs> at like fourteen. Like I made that up at fourteen years old. Oh. Yeah, like not even recently, like fourteen. That was like four years ago. I made that up. My friends were like, "Well, why is your favorite number six? And I said, "Well," and I said that, and then, oh my god, it's funny. Got a laugh. Okay, so, um, fun fact, just we're going to get rolling into talking, because, I don't know, I feel like we could start spitballing and get somewhere. Um, fun fact, I go back to work tomorrow. Um, I've been, I've been not working for the past, like, two weeks, and I've been bored. Um, but I, I actually, I haven't been bored. I'm not gonna lie, I have not been bored. I've been keeping myself very yeah. busy. I've gotten a lot she's of things done. That's why she's been playing the forest with me. No! Like I said, I've been keeping myself very busy. I've been trying not to get bored. And I, I don't think I have. Like, we've played The Forest. I've started streaming again a little bit here and there. Hopefully I can keep that up, Um, you know? Well, now that you have a better Wi-Fi receiver. True, that does make it a lot easier. I'm not going to lie. My streams actually hold up during the podcast, and they hold up while I play games. And, um, yeah. So, we'll see how it goes. And um, I brought, I'm bringing my laptop to the lake with me because it's... I'm going to get done with work at 9 o'clock tonight. I'm going to spend the night at the cottage because I'm working again in the morning for a couple hours. I'm going to bring my laptop Home's with me. coming back. So I'm going to bring my laptop with me, and I'm going to like do all the podcast stuff so I, we can get caught up, caught up on the podcast and everything. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. I'm going to come back. It's not going to be like where I was, where I was streaming every day and you know for like a lot of the hours and uploading all the time, but... It'll be better than I, what I did last summer, which was nothing. So, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll be able to do the podcast. Who knows, maybe we can get some guests involved. Yeah. Summer's gonna be fun. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What was I I don't even know where I was going with that, but you know what? It's fine. Because, you know, and the thing is, is, is like, I am going to have to prioritize work over streaming, unfortunately. Um, it's just because I am going to college in the fall, as I've been saying. And I got to get that money. I got to get that money. I got to get that money. I got to get that. Got to get that money. I got to get that money so I can get that education so I can make more money. You know what I mean? Did I ever like tell you now like you're my starting business? To sound like Kichi when we tried to convince her to be a full time streamer. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, you want to hear where like what my like plan is with my degree, like what I want to do with it? Because yeah, like you can get a degree, but what are you gonna do with said degree? Yeah. I feel like I can share this online. So what I want to become is the uh, or- <laughs> an org AED, like a. What? AED. An AED is like um what they use to resuscitate you. Uh like it's like the the shock thing that they use like when like you're an EM- EMT. You, so you're literally going to become a device that shocks people into life. No. It's it's called an org AED. That's what I'm going to call it. It's org AED. That's what I'm going to be. Okay? I'm going to while I'm in college, I'm going to continue, you know, but I have quite a bit of esports org experience right i've been doing it since i've been doing it for three years now right and in a management position i've been doing it for three years right well two and a half kind of in a management position but three overall right and so what i was thinking is that if i keep you know building my experience through the next four years of college that um when i graduate i can use my business degree and my experience to help young orgs um move forward because a lot of them get stuck at a certain point and they stay there because they don't know what to do next and it's because they're you know gamers who don't really know business they don't know esports business and they're just they just started this because it's something they wanted to do which is good for them you know but they're kind of going in blind right there's really no written guidebook on esports businesses there really isn't i mean it's getting better than it was but there really is no right way to do it well and really the only way that it's getting better is because of all of the people who have pioneered it like yeah you look at you look at nade shot temper hex hastro mm-hmm. like you those know? are the people that are kind of writing the book yeah like you know the owners <clears throat> of phase like apex and um all those guys i would list off the names but one i don't remember them at the moment and two there's so many of them yeah, like, I, I remember when FaZe had, like, when FaZe had, like, at the time they were called leaders, and now they're owners, but... Yeah. I remember when FaZe had, like, five leaders, and it was, like, it was, like, Temper, Rain, Apex, Tico, and Adapt. Yeah. Those were the five, back in, like, 2014, like, forever ago. And they were the five leaders, and now they've probably got, like, a million of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know... It's uh, it's gonna take a lot of like research and and stuff like that, but I think that's what I'm gonna do with my degree. I feel like that would be a good thing. And, and I mean, if you guys have any, uh, I'm trying to write out like I'm trying to like know like what the process will be and everything, and figure it all out now so that I can refine it and maybe even start it before I graduate. You know. Yeah. Oh god, Tone, this sounds great. Sounds fantastic. Deception, why did you just, like, stop? Oh, I was, like, reading this, so... Oh. <laughs> this is not to, like, quickly segue to something else, 
But Charlie Intel just gave details on what Operation Monarch is going to be. Um, it says on uh, Operation Monarch, which begins May 11th, will feature a separate LTM that has Godzilla and Kong. Per Raven, players will retrieve intel on the map to acquire the Monarch Stream device. If you have this device, you can control Godzilla and Kong. Ooh. It makes me think about uh, when Fortnite had Thanos. True. That's because that because you had to get you had to find like the you had to find the hand with the Infinity Stones and you could control Thanos. Interesting. I mean, I'm glad that they're doing something with it, honestly, and not just having it be like Krampus, where it just chases you around the map and kills you. It says, on the map, Kong will stop around in a massive circumference and throw a boulder at any area, which will decimate anyone in the area. So it'll, it'll down anybody that gets hit by it. Godzilla will shoot out a heat ray that will destroy everyone no matter what. There's no last stand state, you're out. Damn. So, like, if Godzilla hits you, you're just dead. You're out of there. I mean, do you still get goosh? I assume, if you have it. But I mean, as long there's, as you like, no get shot your teammates are going to revive you. Uh-uh. <sighs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> Sorry, I just, Riss called me. She says hi, by the way. She wanted me to show a certain video on the podcast, which I will in a second. But I want to finish this first. But yeah, so like, that's like my, so back to what I was talking about. My um, org AED is what I'm going to call myself. And um, I think that would be really good because there's a lot of orgs out there that have really good talent and have really good teams and stuff like that, but they just don't know where to go next. And I feel like if I give my, my plan is to be like, okay, I am your advisor for the next six months. Right? You, I mean, it's going to be paid. I'm not going to just yeah. work for free. But, like, you pay me this amount. I'll be your advisor for six months on everything and anything um, with your org. We can sign NDAs. I'll sign an NDA. Like, it's all fine, dandy, whatever. Um, And so, what? like, what it'll be is, like, we go in and I have a meeting with the owners. And then I have a meeting with the management team just trying to figure out, like, the vibe of the org and where they want to go. And then kind of, like help them get to where they want to go yeah right and they have six months to utilize me for a flat fee right um and then boom you know and if they don't and if it doesn't work uh i don't know hopefully i'll have enough so where it helps them a little bit like you know social media advice because i mean i've been doing social media like for orgs since I was 15, like I've learned a lot. Like I know how to do it. And I feel like someone else doing it and me just be like, hey, this is what you do. And then they apply it and it works and then boom. So I just have to like find an org to work with first and do all that stuff for. And then um, get them where they want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then once I it's do that, be like, a really good idea. It, it sounds promising. And then, like, because, like, one, I'll be able to still create and stuff like that, and I won't be tied to any one org, right? Um, which I really don't feel like I want. Um, just because, like, especially with the way that my life is currently and the, wife's, the way my life's going to be in college, like, with I'm not going to... wife? Question mark. Well, hopefully it won't. <laughs> um, but with the way that my life's going to be in the next four years, like, being tied to an org is going to be kind of hard especially on the content creator side and past that too. I don't know what the next, like I, this past year was so crazy. I don't know what's going to come in the next yeah. few years. So, um, yeah. And if anyone steals my idea, I will come for you. Um, that's that. Uh, I will come for you. Okay. And I plan on starting this very soon. So, um, I, I'm guessing Riss is going to want to steal your idea now. Riss is going to want to... I've already told her about my idea. Okay, then you'll come for her. N next question. Um, beautiful day out. We're having... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I can't with you sometimes, bro. I can't with you. <laughs> I cannot. 
You just set yourself up for all of those. I I really do. I really do. Can't mm. blame me. Anyway, so if you guys see me, um, you know, joining an org, any t- I'm looking to join an org on the management side and only the management side. So if you guys are an org, um, I'm trying to broaden my spectrum, whether it's a super super small org or a really really big org, um. I don't want to be a creator. I don't want to have a lot of jobs, but yeah, I do want to help in some sort of fashion with my knowledge. You're like not a, a lot you're of knowledge. Sort of like a business consultant. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be a business consultant. Like I don't want to. Like I understand. Like probably if it's a small org, I'm not going to get paid, which is fine, right? I can't offer up a lot of my time because I don't have a lot of extra time. But um, I can help. I can be like a social media manager. I can help edit a YouTube video here or there. I can be a recruiter. Like, but anything more than that, I really don't have the time. I barely have enough time to stream. And I don't, I don't know. But yeah, so just a heads up. My DMs are open. That's that. Is that me saying I'm looking for an org again? Yeah. Um. I'm just trying to broaden just trying to broaden my horizons you know what I mean yeah looking for something new something interesting yep. you want to know something interesting yeah I do season 3 update is now live and there's a lot of stuff that's coming I mean, there's, not to mention, there's, like, POIs and stuff coming to Caldera that are different. Um, but, like, gameplay changes. Um, you can activate double XP tokens in-game, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been sniper adjustments, a bunch of bug fixes. Uh, buy station no longer requires confirmation, which means, like... If you select an item in the buy station, it won't say like, "Do you want? Are you sure you want to buy this anymore?" Uh, so you just hit it, and oh. it, and you buy it. Uh, there's supposed to be footstep audio adjustments uh, later in season three. Uh, like I said earlier, that Operation Monarch event's gonna happen in May, which is nice. Um, there. As far as, like, new features that are coming to Warzone, uh, there's there are now perk satchels that are going to be on the ground. So you can ha- get perks without having loadout. Do you know what kind of perks are going to be? Or just... And those perks add on with your loadout. Ooh, so it's like perk upon. It's like having specialist, but not like the full specialist token. It's like getting the three perks that you get for going on to kill streak before you get specialist token it's like that because you can only have one each of like extra perk category like you can only have one more perk one one more perk two but the there's tons of sniper changes um uh most gun most of these snipers will only one shot to the head only um but like they're definitely changing like a bunch of that like some of the guns like the the like the m82 and the Rytec and stuff like that the semi-auto ones that people have been using mm-hmm. um they don't one shot anymore uh you have to two shot them even if it's in the head uh but there's stuff like uh call their iron trials is coming um uh, which is cool uh, there's there's an updated peak, um, there's updated runway, uh, lagoon is updated. Um, there's a new POI called dig site. You might find some stuff that has to do with uh, the Operation Monarch event that's coming. Probably like a little Easter egg before that event starts. Um, but the, as far as like the perks that are spawning across Caldera in the first wave of perks they're going to add. I don't know if this is they're going to add more or not. 
But the the first perks you're gonna be able to find on the ground are battle hardened engineer, high alert, restock, tempered, quick fix, scavenger, and only in plunder, because it doesn't really make a difference in BR, you're gonna find point man. But they said only one of each perk can be equipped at any one time, so uh you're not gonna be able to like stack perk twos or something like that. Lootable perks can be pinged to communicate to your squad so you can obviously tell them where the perks are. Location per lootable perks are additive to loadout perks. So like if you get a loadout and you already have perks, or if you already have loadout and you find those perks, it just adds them on instead of replacing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all perks are unequipped on death, but do not drop. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna die, and then your the enemy can just go pick up all your perks off the ground. Oh, that's good. Cause that would suck. Yeah, cause then it's like everybody just starts fighting over who has all the perks. Literally, that would. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they're they're doing a bunch of stuff like that, and they also said that, uh, um, in season four. Uh, this was just posted a second ago. Raven Software also said Season 4 will feature the biggest shift in Caldera that takes into account player feedback on the map and more. So, we'll see what they do with that. But, they're, uh, it seems like they're definitely making some good changes, and I'm sure that some of, at least some of these changes were probably, like, Especially like gameplay changes were probably what they were alluding to back in season two when they said we got to fix the game first before we implement new gameplay things. Yeah. So apparently they fixed the game to a good enough state, which I think the game is in a lot better state than it was. Um, that they're gonna add this stuff in, and they're still putting fixes in, so that's nice. Oh, that is nice. <clears throat> um. But yeah, I mean. We got all that stuff, plus, um, there's been some interesting developments. Apparently, uh, Modern Warfare 2 has been shown to a bunch of, uh, NFL players in Las Vegas. Uh, a oh. lot of NFL players have been talking about it. There's been some NFL players that are like content creators or like people that just play Warzone that have been replying to Charlie Intel talking about the game. Uh, and residents in Southern California and people that have been invited to go to Infinity Ward have been playtesting the game mm -hmm. over the past couple of days. So I would not be surprised if maybe in an hour or maybe tomorrow or something like that, we get something about Modern Warfare 2, like the logo or a teaser or something. So... Because usually when they're doing this stuff and they're revealing it, it it's like quick, like within yeah, the not... next couple of days. So it's going to be like either today, tomorrow, or this weekend. I mean, like I said, it'll probably be like a teaser. I don't think we're going to get the full reveal. The full no. reveal, everybody, all the leakers are still saying the full reveal set for May 30th. But I bet we get something like a logo and like maybe a teaser trailer or like maybe like a bunch of people start talking about it. Like they're like, we can't say like a ton about the game yet. But yeah, we did go play it. Okay. It's it's ramping up, but it's it is all all right. Whenever it's announced, so okay, wouldn't surprise me if it's like tomorrow that they announce it. That'd be pretty cool, though. I think I'm ready to learn more about the new COD. I. I haven't really been playing a lot this COD um, because I just haven't wanted to. Um, I mean, I, I recently I have had the time and before my excuse was I haven't had the time. But like I played and I'm like, yeah, you know, like there's so many other games to play. And even like older games, like I've been playing with Deception. Um, the uh, The Forest. And honestly, it's a lot more fun. Like I'm having a blast. I get, you know, 
It's The Forest is a fun game. Oh yeah. Like I thought like I was going to be um you know, I was going to I was going to get bored of it, but like honestly, I all I want to do is play the game all day. Can I play the game all day? No. Can I play the game today? Absolutely not. I mean, I probably could if I wanted to, but I just don't have the time today. But it really is a fun game and um 10 out of 10 recommend uh, for anyone that wants to play The Forest and or is looking for a game to play. Um, the Forest is great because The Sons of the Forest is about to come out. And I was about to say, if you if you want to, if you've been seeing stuff about Sons of the Forest because it's been gaining traction lately, mm-hmm. uh, go play The Forest first. It is so much fun. It's like, I don't even know how much it is on Steam right now. It's only like $20. Which... Yeah. I mean, for an indie game like that, you could argue that it's a little bit too much, but I, that game goes on sale, like, all the time. Like, yeah. almost any time Steam has a sale, it goes down to, like, $6. Um, <clears throat> I bought it when it was, like, five ninety nine. so. But it's just truly a fantastic game. Yeah, I right now it. it's 20 bucks. It's nineteen ninety nine. Um, Either, I mean, it's, it is $20, right? But you're going to... I mean, what? How many hours do we already have? Like, we already have like we've already played like. T- I don't we even probably, know. Yeah, I think we played about twelve hours. On twelve the, hours uh, on the game on the server we've been playing on. And we're not even so. like we we play like we've only started playing again recently. Like we played like a couple hours one time, and then we, yeah, played, we played like twelve we played hours like, in the past week. We played like two game sessions, like three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> and we just started replaying it now. And we've probably put in like eight hours in the past like nine I think it's nine hours in the past two weeks. Um, which we probably could have put in more, but I just haven't had the time. I don't even play two weeks, it's been like the past week. Past week, yeah. So, I mean, it's a good game. If you're look if you're if you're not vibing with COD right now and you're a COD player, you're not vibing with any game, it, even if you have the force and you haven't played it in a while, it, it's a great storyline. Um it's Dude, super that's what's fun, fun by yourself. about it is like even yeah. if you played it and you know the game or whatever and you like the game, if you come back like we have after not playing it for a while, it's just as fun as it used to be. Oh yeah, and the thing is too is like if you don't want to play the storyline out, you can build a big freaking base and murder. A bunch yeah, I mean of that's what we're doing like... right now. I mean we're we're not worried about the storyline that much. No, I mean, I mean we we're still kind of game, but we're trying to like. We're basically trying to set up so we can beat the game. Yeah, we have a really great base right now. We have a little house, and we have this big fence around us with, like, spikes and stuff like that. So we're protected from cannibals, right? We're in a spot where cannibals don't come in very much. Um, yeah, like, the cannibals have really only showed up since we started What's up, Dr. Pepper? How you doing, man? Long time no see. Before we started building that fence, there were never cannibals, and we... We were on like day fifteen or sixteen, right? Yeah, now. and now we're starting to get like a couple cannibals here and there. Um, I think the main reason why we built the fence, um, is because of we're starting to get the really big guys now, like the big bosses, where if like you kill them, you get um like cannibal armor. So yeah, we actually killed one of them. <laughs> we teamed up and killed. Oh that yeah, guy. we killed. That yeah, was funny. that guy was crazy. And then there was another one, and we just kind of like ran and hide because I did not want to take on that guy by myself. I did not have enough health, didn't have any food. Rough, but um, I'm gonna. You gotta choose your battles in that game. You can't just fight them all the time. But I want to fight them all the time. I know it's really fun. And the thing is, is like, um, if you, you know, if you want to go scavenging, you can go scavenging. If you want to build, you can. If you want to go explore, you can. Um, there's certain, there's a couple grindy parts to the game, which if you like grinding games where you're like sitting and doing the same thing over and over again, there's stuff like that in it. Um, I would say the, uh, like the absolute grindiest part of the game is getting your athleticism and your strength up. Yeah. But like the thing is, is like you really don't need those that much um as long as you can like fight um you get good tools um yeah you can make up for it oh yeah but, i mean if you look though from somebody like i've seen videos like me and tone only have like around like 25 30 athleticism uh-huh. and i've seen videos of people comparing 40 athleticism to 99 and it's like not only with higher athleticism do you run farther 
people and you get energy faster, you run faster. Like yeah. you're like, if you're 99 athleticism versus somebody like me or Tone, you're just zooming past mm-hmm. us. Like you're gone. And like the thing is too is like there's a whole wiki page, um, with everything you need to know about the game. Every little um, cra- everything to it's got a crafting guide. It's got a guide on where everything's at. So like say you're stuck. Say you're like okay. Um, like this happened yep. to us. We, I got stuck in a cave. Deception died. And we we're like, okay, we need something to get out. Um, and <laughs> little did we know it was right in front of our face. Yeah. But so, <laughs> cause it was, was literally <laughs> like, it was literally like a few yards away from where I died. Yeah. Um, but we looked it up and I sent deception on a thing and he ended up finding me. And then we fought some cannibals and we got what we needed. It was a climbing axe, in case you guys were wondering. It was right in front of my face, and I did not see it. I'm like, oh, there's a light there. And it was literally shining on the climbing axe. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine, really. Yeah, because the light does tend to shine where there's an item that you might need. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of cool different stuff. There's, um, you, can, you can either play into the story, or you can just go get the stuff and just kill a bunch of cannibals. Uh, on PC, you can spawn in cannibals. Like, you can go into, like, creative mode and spawn in a bunch of cannibals. So if you're bored and you want to, like, just kill a bunch of cannibals for fun, go for it. If you want to become a cannibal yourself, you can. Do not recommend yeah, it. Yeah, there's, like... Yeah, there's we, were, a- <laughs> <laughs> we were, uh... We were... No, there's not even a thing. Like, you can be... Like, you can... So when you kill a cannibal, you can actually, like, chop them up and cook their... Or, like, dry their um yeah. body parts and eat them. Yeah. Um. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Too. Your sanity goes down like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but uh, I'd love to see what happens when your sanity is at zero. Um, I'd love to see that. I don't. I don't want. I mean, if you want to go for it, you can. I'm not gonna personally. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to not eat. I think we're we're pretty good on food though. Like we're we have like this. Oh, we're whole... fantastic on food. We got like three drying racks just full of food. Three drying racks full of food. We've got a huge garden full of blueberries. And blueberries are awesome because, one, blueberries. And personally, I love blueberries, IRL. And blueberries are just amazing. Hold on, my grandma's calling Because, me. like, the blueberries, like, uh, they, they not only increase your, uh, they not only give you, uh, food, which increases your, uh, stomach capacity, I guess is what you would say, but it decreases your hunger. It also, because blueberries have um a lot of like hydrating stuff in them, they give you water as well. So oh yeah, it's and not only that, when you eat three sets of blueberries off of a bush, it gives you another seed. So you eat one, you can plant it again mm-hmm. and keep you know you just keep reproducing. And there's a uh, bag, so you can take them with you. Ah, oh. oh man, we're getting like real yep. into the forest here. I mean, that's for you guys if you guys are bored with Call of Duty and this new season isn't for you, or if you want to play the new season and you, you know, everything real done real quick. Like if you get the battle pass done and you're like, ah, oh, okay, that's done. Um, and you want to play something else, Forest is great. I, I mean, recommend. The, the Forest is on PlayStation, and it mm. ju- they just were able to port it over to Xbox finally, so. It's on Xbox or Xbox Game Pass if you want it. But it is not cross-platform, I would, though. I it's would honestly, up. like, yeah, it's not cross-platform, so whatever platform you get it on, you better find friends on that platform. Which is really easy to do. I feel like it's one of those games. Because it was, like, I think about a year ago, maybe two, Um, The Force was free on PlayStation 4 for, like, PS Plus members. So Yeah, it was. Um, it was. So that's how I got it. No, actually, fun fact, um, someone bought me the game so I could play with them. And then the next couple, like a couple months later, it was on PS Plus. So yeah, and so and then somebody else did that when you wanted it on PC. Yeah, it's pretty great, you know. <laughs> oh, what happens when you're broke? I guess. But yeah, if you like, obviously it's on consoles, but I think you ultimately get the best experience on PC. Uh, not just because of the game, like the game improvements and all the graphical and gameplay stuff you can do on pc but the game was originally made for pc so it's mm-hmm. naturally just gonna work Run at its better. best on yeah. pc so like i trust me like i i first played the forest on playstation like tone like 
I had it on there and I played it and I like the game, but it plays and runs so much better on PC. Like it's a completely different experience. And if you're looking to stream the game too, um, if you guys are, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a streamer and you want to stream the game, it's not a very high viewed, um, like category, but there's not a lot of people like streaming it either. So like, um, well, it'll you probably know, start. It'll probably start coming back up once it's about time for Sons of the Forest. People will be oh, hopping yeah. in trying to watch it. Oh yeah, but you know, what the one thing is, it's <sighs> um, it's not like it's not a very saturated game, Twitch or YouTube. Yeah. Um, as far as like streaming you play goes, it a lot or Trovo. There's potential. True, and you get like those people that come in and um, like I had this coming to my, I had a couple people coming to my stream and they're like, oh, did you know about this? And I was like, no, I did not. And they helped me get certain things, so that was really cool. Yeah. Of course, I just really like that game. Uh, for the longest time, I wasn't really like a survival game guy, but playing the forest makes me want to go play other survival games because the forest is just really fun. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy that game. If there's like, if there's like only a few games that I would rather play than COD because I like COD so much, but COD starts getting annoying. The forest is where it's at. And it's a really chill game too. Like. If you wanted to, you could build this really big base. It has really good defenses to cannibals and stuff. And you can just chill on your base, farm, um, go hunting. I mean, if you're on PC and you don't even want to have to deal with the grind, you can just turn developer mode on and mm-hmm. give yourself everything. True. <clears throat> One of those cool games. Also, I've also been playing The Sims 4. Don't come at me for this, but I've been having a lot of fun. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really like a Sims guy. I've never really been a Sims girl, but Riss got the game. She's like, oh, you should get Sims. And so I made us on the Sims and it's really great, actually. Fun fact. Yeah, it would be so fun if it was, uh, if Riz had a PC, because it'd be me, you, and her on a server on the forest. Oh, <laughs> oh, that would be a fantastic time. She'd see a cannibal and just run. Yeah, watching her play GTA, <laughs> it is the best experience of my life because she only drives motorcycles. Only motorcycles. There's one motorcycle that can fly, so. Hmm. She doesn't have that motorcycle yet, but she only drives motorcycles. And she just runs around and just robs convenience stores. And then loses the cops. And then gets the cops again. And then loses them. She's just that good. Oh, yeah. Man. It's a, it's a good time for... Well, I was going to say it's a good time for video games, but there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff coming. Prior to E3, but for COD, it's a good, it's a good, interesting time. Oh yeah. It's, uh, it's possible that Modern Warfare Two is quickly approaching. Uh, according to the leaks, it is, but you know, of course, we don't know until something actually happens. Uh, you got to keep your eyes peeled. And as always, the podcast will keep you updated. Oh, yeah. We always keep you updated here every Wednesday at 12 p.m. EST. Or on other platforms where you find your podcasts. Yeah, you can just go watch them whenever you want to watch them. (laughs) True. Just search Climb Together Podcast. We are the only Climb Together Podcast out there. Yeah. We're like literally you type in climb together podcast on YouTube where the first thing that shows up. Yup. On if we can start uploading videos again. I'm working on it. I have two of them that I'm working on right now. I just have to it's been like um it's been like two months, so I have to like re listen to them. So I can make the descriptions and tags and stuff. So I know what they're about. For the most part I can just listen to the first like ten minutes and remember, but some of them I just have, we talk about so much sometimes sometimes when it's like especially when like with cdl we talk about like a lot of cdl right but sometimes there's like yeah. other things in there that are pretty interesting 
You know, one thing that we haven't really, like, I have not seen at all about anything is phase one. Um, yeah, I feel like the, I feel like the hype for that is like died down a lot. Yeah. Um, I just, I haven't seen anything about it. I don't know if they're slacking. I don't know if. Oh, maybe okay. We're just not in the loop, but like so, something. Like... Okay, so here's the thing. Um, actually, tomorrow they're revealing the top twenty. Of course. Tomorrow they're revealing the top twenty. Of course. They, um, that, that happened last time when we were talking about phase one, and we were thinking, oh, like what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a while. Nope, it was the next day. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, all these people are being like, phase one, top 20 tomorrow, who wants to see me in the warehouse? Which I think that'll be we'll interesting. See, who your fa- see if your favorite creators make it. Yeah, which would be pretty I mean, cool. I mean, I think, personally. top two favorite creators didn't make it, because I didn't try and Tone just got unlucky, but... I, I just... <coughs> I don't know. I'm ready to see... I want to <laughs> see a very diverse top 20. Like, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see a bunch of, like, young... Got white guys in the building together. I really don't. I want to see like all kinds of people that play oh, yeah. all kinds of different games. All like, different ty- I, I don't want all it to different be kinds like of games. Fifteen god players and like variety people just because they're variety people. Like yeah, I'd like to see maybe like five or six cod players and they just stack it up with a bunch of other people. Oh, yeah, like I want it to be a very, very, very diverse top twenty. If it's not, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Cause last year's top twenty, well, last time they did it, top twenty was not. I, I wasn't what I was looking for. Was it a good I top twenty? See yeah. that guy that plays Forza that makes it. Ooh. I hope he makes. It. That guy's cool. But if you guys have any creators that you watch that are in the top twenty of Phase One, they're getting announced tomorrow. So this is your last chance to vouch. Um, personally, I wish I was in the top 100, but honestly, I get why I wasn't. Um, I also have been kind of MIA. Kind of, this happened at the wrong time for me. Um. Yeah, you, like, you were really unlucky because, yeah, like. Yeah, I got kicked phase out. Phase one, like, <laughs> happened right when the whole, like, you being MIA started. Yeah, because, well, the thing is, is I got kicked out, and then, like, two weeks after I got kicked out, phase one started, and I'm like, oh. I mean, because uh, I wanted to, because it got announced while I was still you know in a stable like not in a stable living environment but i was still like in a living environment where i had my pc set up i was streaming constantly like i was in a good spot right and i was like yeah i'm gonna go for this i'm gonna do like i had my whole thing planned out you know and then i had to change it because um of everything that happened so like it didn't come out the way i wanted it to i didn't have as much time because i was working full i was working like 30 hours a week like, um, on top of, you know, helping my grandparents, spending time with my girlfriend, like, there just was, it was, there wasn't a lot of time. And then I finally finished it, and I was just like, okay, it's done. Like, there's, I can't really do much more to it, because I just don't have the time. And then I ended up editing my friend Kichi's, which hers turned out really good. Like, hers were, was, I'm gonna say this right now, hers was by far better than mine. Um, yeah. And I edited it, so it's fine. Like, I don't care. Um... And I'm like, if if she had made it, I would have been fine, because I'm like, that's my homie right there. Like, Kichi's been like one of my day ones, and I've known her since I was 16. I've known her since the beginning of like 2020. I've known her for a long time, and like, seeing her get there, that would have been like perfect for me, right? But uh, I don't know anyone in the top 100, like personally. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard because like there were like a bunch of people that I was hoping we'd get in the top one hundred. Oh like, yeah, basically none of them did. And there's only there's <laughs> three thousand, no, it was six thousand people, something like that. Three thousand or six thousand people that entered. Like the chances were so much lower this year. Well, the chances were so much higher. Sorry. Of getting into the top 100 because what was it 20 phase five it was like a hundred thousand people they said had entries and there wasn't as many this time because you had to go through so much more you had to like upload your link and everything like that for it to be valid right and then that way they could like keep track yeah. of how many people and i feel like they did it a lot better this season as far like this time around as how they did it i think it was very much improved from the last time 
but at the same time like you know it's phase they're looking for people to be in phase you gotta you gotta look and see who is in phase and they're probably trying to you know not go too far out of the phase brand itself right like because yeah. i i think phase they're a really great org right but when you look at it it, it really is like a a lot of people call it a frat boy or, org because a lot of the people there are like what you would think a frat boy would be um yeah. No shame. These guys are freaking good at what they do. Pioneers in the industry. Right. But they're probably looking for more people like them. And and some people that aren't, obviously, because diver- diversity is a really big thing. Um, now more than ever, because, you know, people like representation. I like res- representation. When I see a, a, a female streamer um, join a really big org, I'm hyped. Like when Kaylee joined FaZe hyped you know what i mean this was like yeah. finally you know what i mean when butters joined atlanta phase like i was hyped for that too because i mean it was so weird that she joined atlanta phase yeah and not phase phase, phase. No. why that was i do not know and because she's so tied to cod maybe i don't know i don't know yeah but phase has always been a cod thing so like listen we can go into that but i don't think the world wants to hear my opinion <laughs> I don't want to get shunned from the world on my opinion on that because I do have one. That that'll have to be after the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I know where that's going. <laughs> I have opinions on a lot of things, and I just sometimes I just need to keep my mouth shut because I may be right, but it may hurt some people's feelings, and I don't want to to, to do that. Um. Yeah. And, you know, I could be wrong, too. Like, there could be a really great reason, because there's a lot of orgs that have content creators based off of their... Like, there's a lot of, like, COD teams that have content creators just for their COD team, you know what I mean? Like, there's NYSL creators, there's Optic. There's a couple, like, Optic Texas creators. But I really don't know the difference, because they have Optic in front of their name anyway, so... Not really too much difference, right? Um, Are you talking about, like, the Envy girls? Yeah. Yeah, but they're still under envy. That's the problem. So, I don't know. There's, there's so much into it. But... The thing about Optic and Envy is, like, on the content creation side, that's weird. Because it's like... <laughs> it's like the people that were already... Some people that were already with Envy are still representing Envy as a content creator. But then, like, there's some people that have just went over to Optic. I mean, most of them are, like, Warzone players, so... Yeah. I don't know. It's a very interesting world um because i mean at the end of the day you have to think like some people really do think that girls aren't um or or women aren't at the same caliber that men are at or boys are at because of their gender and that in itself and is it like oh well i don't want to enjoy their content or this that the other or whatever it's because they make content differently than you do sorry like we're not making i mean for the most part it's not. I'm just going to stop that before I say something. Um, You know, it's one of those things like if you are, I'm going to say this right now. If you're an org owner listening to this right now, okay, nine times, nine of you out of 10 are going to be a man in their 20s or 30s, whatever, right? If you don't have a single female identifying content creator in your org, you're doing something wrong. And if you only have one, you're not doing as bad as the other ones, but it's part of it now. Okay, this isn't just a guy thing anymore. Okay? Not a guy thing anymore. That's why I like this podcast. It's because it has me and it has Deception. And we're two very different people because you're a woman yeah i'm a woman (laughs) no i could i i took a debate class and i could raise some opinions that probably would not make you very happy yeah probably not but like like, you're saying that if you're if your organization has is completely full of males and you don't have a female then you're doing something wrong what if the females just aren't good enough to be in the organization 
well, if you're if you have okay, here's my thing. Right, if you have <laughs> if you have like a so there's like you know there's a it's couple like tiers. WNBA. You know, if you have an S tier organization, I can understand not having a lot of females, right? Because sometimes some of them don't want to join orgs or like. Well, yeah, um, but at that point, like the good females should be wanting to join them, and you yeah. should be wanting to get them. Well, like you take people like Valkyrie, for instance. Like before, Hundred Thieves, she was not in an organization, <laughs> and she picked Hundred Thieves because it was a brand new organization and she liked their, you know what I mean? She had a lot of other bigger orgs reaching out to her. She didn't want to join yeah. them because she didn't, she didn't want to associate with an org. Right. That's true. And now she owns one. Like now she's a co-owner of hundred thieves. But, um, if you are a, like, so there's like the S tier, A tier, B tier, right? S tier is like the top ones, like optic phase. Else. Um, like the really big orgs that we all know. There's yeah. the A tier ones, which are like the A tier ones are like medium size. A tier ones are like ones that are either up and coming that have been a thing for the past few years, yeah, or orgs that have been around for a long time but just haven't gained the traction. Like I feel like if you have over a hundred, if you have over a hundred thousand followers on Twitter, um, or a hundred thousand followers in general, like that, I think would be like an A tier, A tier org. B tier org is anything yeah. from like ten thousand to a hundred thousand. Right, and if if and at, the, at I that even point do like C D F tier, I it just has B tier. It's everybody else. <laughs> everybody else below that, right? <laughs> and I feel like if you're A B or anything below that, like there's definitely female creators out there that are more than good enough to be in that kind of org. You know what I mean? The only thing that there's I a would lot say... of great creators out there. The only thing I would say that your argument loses credibility for is then this incites orgs to just pick up women creators because they're women, not because they're actually good at what they do. True. It could be. It's the same thing with like people of different skin colors. Like I feel like sometimes people just pick up black creators because they're black, not because they're actually good at what they do. True. You are correct in that. Like, I'm not going to say you're for, wrong. It's good for diversity, but at the same time, like you shouldn't be picking people up because they're a different gender or a different skin color. Like that should like that shouldn't be the priority. Cause then it just makes you look weird. It does. I will be honest. It does make you look weird if you do it based on that. But if you there are a lot of really good female creators out there that are looking for orgs and they may not be like, oh yeah, I want to join an org and I might not outright say that. But you know, if you got if they got an offer from, you know, um certain like taylor for example like if she got an offer from optic she'd take it in his heartbeat yeah you know yeah. what i mean there are a lot of um there are a lot of you know female streamers out there that are like that you know and they are good at what they do um and they are unaffiliated because one they don't one no girl wants to join an organization that's all guys i've yeah. been there and it sucks because one, your opinion gets overlooked a lot because you're the only girl. Two, um, it feels very alone. Because guys have like a lot of guys have like a certain way that they talk. A lot of girls have a certain yeah. way that they talk to each other. And when it's a bunch That's of guys, bad. it's a very different atmosphere than like a balanced, oh, there's, you know, a couple girls here, a couple guys here. Right? Yeah. And you either when you're a girl in that situation, you're either alienated or you gotta become one of the guys. Yeah. And it can be very hard because you lose part of yourself when you become one of the guys. It makes it hard to make other gamer girl friends because you're like talking like the guys. Yeah, because then you become one of the guys and everybody's like, what the? Yeah. So it's like, like when I joined, when I joined Raw, it was only Kichi and I. And I didn't even know Kichi was in there at first, but I was just really good homies with Pervy. And, you know, I just needed, I, he like gave me an opportunity and it was probably the best opportunity I've ever you taken. You were like, you were it was like you were slowly becoming one of the guys, but then you found Kiji, and it was like, oh. Yeah, and then I finally, like, I found, like, my girl squad to play with. And that helped, because it, I wasn't the only girl in there. Um, but, like, when it came to, like, I was one of the only girls in management for a long time. And um, it gets hard, because you have different views on things. No. You have different opinions. And it's not, it's, you have a different opinion, not only because you're a different person, because everyone else has their own opinions, but 
like as a girl you have different opinions on things than guys do sometimes and and when um you don't have another girl back there to back you up it's like okay sweet i'm you know doing this alone and and when you're alone it's kind of hard but when you have other people there that are like you and think like you in a certain way not exactly like you but when you have other people that are like-minded and are like grew up in the same kind of way you know what i mean then it yeah. makes it easier there's sometimes you can't deal with the guys you know and you just want to play with another because like that's a lot of younger orgs are like communities where you can find people to hang out with and play with and stuff like that and um there comes a point where you're like man i just need some more girls to play with yeah you know what i mean and well you don't know what i mean but um when you have like another person in the org that is a girl you'd be like oh yeah what's up like how you doing girl like there's certain ways it's just a it's a different atmosphere kind of thing i don't know i don't know how to explain it but that's probably the best i can explain it i think the thing that we have to establish is we need to stop like like the thing we got to establish is don't worry about if somebody is a girl or somebody is a different race or whatever like just consider them a person yeah because like when i wanted to do like the podcast with you and like when i started playing games with you like i didn't care at all that you are a girl like i just liked playing games with you and it didn't matter to me like if you were a guy i wouldn't have cared well you were also watching another streamer that was like me though you know, Taylor and I are very similar in many ways. We're both um, queer women in the game. I mean, yeah, but I didn't watch Taylor games. because she was a girl either. I know that. I didn't watch Midnight because she was a girl. Okay, but what do what do us three all have in common? Deception. We're all very three similar things, right? Women I that didn't are watch queer. It because of that, either. Well, I understand that you didn't. <laughs> okay. I understand that you see, didn't. This is this is the thing is you you just keep pushing that and I'm try I'm saying we have to get away from okay, it. Okay, 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 deception, but listen. <laughs> but listen. I'm not saying that you watched us because of that. I'm not saying you but the thing is is you had like a blind thing going into that, right? But like that's the way that like streamers connect to each other. When they raid out their, you know, when they raid out to other people, they raid out to people that are like them. You know what I mean? Because they I mean, want, yeah, because the there's, time, they also don't. True. but I mean, me personally, Taylor plenty of like, Taylor has plenty of straight white male friends that she reads out there. True. <laughs> okay. But here's, okay. But they have similarities in content. If you're going to rate out your, um, if you're going to rate out your stream, this is my personal, like, and what I've heard from other people. Yeah. When you rate out your stream, you have a certain type of viewership, right? They watch your content because they like your content for a certain reason, right? Whether it's your personality, your gameplay, um, whatever, this, that, and the other, right? When you rate out your, you know, your stream, if you're, um, you're going to rate out to people that play either the same game as you, are really good at the same game that you play a lot, um... Like, if you're a COD player, you're most likely not going to rate out to a um a play- person that plays Forza unless you're friends with them, right? Or yeah. they have a similar personality to you, right? But if they have a different personality, they play... When I play a game like that that's not like COD, I try to find, like, a new person that plays the same game. Yeah, right? So, like, people... It's like a... <sighs> What I did with Black Ops 3 with custom zombies is, like, I would, like, not a lot of my friends played it. So I was like, let me just find somebody that has, like, one or two viewers that plays this. Exactly. Like, it's, a, but it's, like, the similar game, right? And I'm similar kind of person to Taylor, right? Taylor's a kind of similar person to me. Um, You know, we weren't, like, homies, but, like, I was in her chat, right? I was playing COD. It's a very similar atmosphere. Right? People like to have things that are similar to them so they can relate. Relatability. Relatable. Relatability. 
I think that's the word I was looking for. Is people like relatability. 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 That's I don't a know if, big word for you. I know. And that's why it took me so long <laughs> to get there. People like relatability. And if you don't have relatability in your org, you're missing something. Because that's um, that's what I was trying to get at. Is you need to have relatability. If you want to pick up people that are good um, COD players, say you have a really, really good guy that's a COD player, but he's a person of color and he sees it's just a bunch of white dudes. Is he going to join? Maybe. Would he be more inclined if he, saw, if he had a little bit more relatability with the people that were there? Most definitely. Like, it just... But then there's so many other factors to think about. Yeah. Like, what if he was a black guy that woke up, that not woke up, but grew up in a white community predominantly the whole time? So he just made white friends and they didn't care. <laughs> so then he'd just be like, yeah, I'll join this org. Let's go. Like I said, it wasn't. It's not out of the realm, but the probability is lower. People like relatability. Like, um, you know, it's like, oh yeah, it's like. I, I just what? noticed Wyatt in my chat. Maybe that's how. Maybe that's how Wyatt needs to get fiber. He needs to find the other four percent of his county that has fiber, so it's relatable, and be like, "Yeah, I need fiber now." Yeah. <laughs> But, I don't know. That's what I was trying to get at. If you have an org, have relatability. Have, don't just pick up people because they're relatable. But, like, you know, if you find 0.4%. Oh, 0.4%. That's like three people. Well, I live out in the middle of nowhere, so mine's like 0%. That's like three people. Damn. Don't spit facts right now. Um... <laughs> But like it's one of those things. It's it's gaming has become a very diverse group of people, right? And um, if you want your org be really relatability is a huge thing. It's a huge thing in a lot of different, not just in gaming, but in real life anyway. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know. Struggling. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. You need a lot of relatability <laughs> in your organization. Don't pick up people because they're relatable and like their content sucks. But if you find someone with good content and they're different than everyone else in your org, bring them in. Bring them in. What's the worst Dude, thing that's gonna do? We had a little climb together session just now and it wasn't we weren't even thinking about doing that. Yeah, I love when we do that. It's my That's favorite. why we do a podcast. We like if anybody thinks that the podcast was orchestrated so we could do this, uh, it really wasn't. We never orchestrate. We just wanted to have a platform we could do it because for months before the podcast was a we thing, were we would just it. casually do this on stream or off stream. Hey Mel. <clears throat> so that's where I was getting at. Relatability. If you're doing anything where it involves a group of people, relatability. You know what I mean? People love seeing themselves in certain things. And when I see seeing themselves, I mean, not them exactly, but um, people that are like them in certain ways. So, relatability! That's the where I was getting at with all that. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> Even though we're at like an hour. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. I see myself in Wyatt because he's my grandson. Your grandson? Yeah, Cash did a Cash did a Twitter family thing. Mm -hmm. I'm apparently his dad along with CDL Intel, and <laughs> Wyatt is his son. So every time every time Cash has commented, my son, it, it's actually a thing now. <laughs> yeah, uh, my I think my parents are my parents are Taylor and Optic. <laughs> Because that's how much I've been on t Twitter just, lately. Because I just like... And then you got me. It's ugh. Twitter just knows. Yeah, Wyatt, Cash can't hold you because you're the son that became better at w what he was doing than his father. It's like all of the fathers that played basketball and now their sons are way better. It's like Ouch, that. Man, oh my god. <clears throat> Ooh. All right. Deception, is there anything else you want to talk about? 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we covered a lot. We covered a lot of things that we wanted to cover and also things that we didn't expect to cover, which was fun. Mm-hmm. That's oh, that's how a podcast goes. I just saw this on Twitter. Um, Valorant, also, so we're talking about how there's a new season update for Valorant. There's also a new act update for Valorant. So if you're a Valorant player, there is a new agent. So if you guys are bored this weekend... Um, oh, there's cash. There's cash. Uh, if you guys are bored this weekend um, and you guys play Valorant, uh, there's a new agent to grind. Um, so yeah, there's that. Oh, you know what we could talk about at the end? What? This, this is not something. It's not something I meant to save for the end, but I didn't think about it until now that you talked about Valorant. Optic is a Valorant major champion. Oh yeah! Congratulations, Optic. They just got into Valorant too, which is really cool. <sighs> Optic are Valorant major champions. Hell yeah. They did it. Hell yeah. They did it. Let's go, Optic. Dude, the whole time, like, when I watch Valorant, I obviously watch it for the gameplay, but, like, when I see them cut to, like, the stage, their stage is just unbeatable. Yeah. See, the it's thing so is, sick. I don't play Valorant anymore. I used to play Valorant a lot. Like, I was a Valorant nut job. Okay. But I can't play it anymore for two yeah. reasons. Did you break one, everything? <laughs> okay, that is one reason. It's because I get very angry. And I, because one thing is, I used to be very good at the game. I used to be not very good, but I used to be pretty good. Like, I would top, I'd get like 30 bombs pretty much almost every single game in my, in my prime. And the thing is, I stopped playing for a while and I started playing again and I got really bad. So I got really angry at myself, how bad I was doing. And because I was just naturally good at the game. And now I suck, and so I get mad. Right, if you want a KBM stinker? Just put me on your team, cause I, I played keyboard and mouse on a game in school because, uh, my, my IT teacher brought this really old Wolfenstein game that you could play multiplayer on, and we played that. I played keyboard and mouse. I got pretty good at that after a couple months, but I haven't played in like four years, so I suck now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible now. I'm back to, like, not understanding how to use the mouse and keyboard anymore. Oh, just... But yeah, I used to play, now I don't play anymore. I like to watch it, though, and I do follow the game um, because of the fact that I, I did play. I low-key got really good at that game, though. It was, like, an old... It was an old Wolfenstein game from, like, 2003. Like, graphics were, like, poopy. Yeah. But... But the game, like, actually played really well. Uh, and it was a lot like Counter Strike. Like you couldn't ADS, but there was a really small crosshair. So like, you it was like Counter Strike, but it was fun. Like we played like on these. Uh, he, my teacher had all these old modded maps. So it wasn't like the regular maps in the game. It was the ones that people modded in, uh, and made their own maps. And they were it was so fun. Like we played like a tons of different modes on that game. There was like. There's a bunch of us in that class, and he put it on every computer, so we just played. Oh, God, that was fun. I'd go back to that. Um, there's one thing in school I'd go back to, it's playing that. <laughs> one thing that me and my classmates used to do during, like, lunch periods and stuff like that, they used to have, like, um, educational Minecraft on the computers. So we used to play that during lunch. We would go to the computer lab and play educational Minecraft. Dude, when <laughs> I just, that game... Like, I, that was so good. I was playing against people that were good at KBM, too. Like, I was playing against... A couple of my friends played PUBG on PC. And this one guy that was in the computer networking class as well was a... He, he wasn't, like, a Counter-Strike pro, but he was pretty dang good at the game. Like, he played it all the time. But, like, I started holding my own against those guys after, like, a month or so of playing that game. And it got to the point where I was one of the better players... On KBM. Do you? But uh, yeah, it's that was five years ago. So <laughs> uh, I'm back to not knowing how to do anything on KBM. I'm terrible now. I'm okay. I play. I play the forest on KBM. I just I don't know. I I like. I don't know if it's like right. It's definitely not where I got older because it's not like I'm forty years old. But, like, I just lost all muscle memory when I, because I didn't have a PC at the time. I just lost all muscle memory of how to play KBM. So, 
I'm back to square one. Best square to be at? Opinion? Square one? Honestly, like, I want to get back. I want to try playing KBM, but I don't know. I think you should play the forest KBM. Part of me just can't get away from controller. Okay, Deception, you can't play, you can't just start playing COD KBM, okay? You gotta play, like, games that you... I don't wanna you. play COD KBM. I, COD's gonna be a... I, like, my, some of my friends and some of my RRO friends tried to convince me to do that, and I was like, no, COD, COD is always gonna be a controller game for me. I might play Zombies KBM, but multiplayer, it's always gonna be a controller game. <clears throat> well, the thing is, is I... This is, this is what I did, right? Is I got my PC, right? And I played a game that was very easy to me at the time. Um, you can't ask about the New York land. He's trying to meet you in New York. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be at the New York land. Hopefully. Um, I just have to make enough money to go and I gotta buy my tickets when. Wyatt, I think any of us could get good, could get as good as we are on controller with KBM, but like. Take we would have to time. sacrifice so much time. Like oh, that yeah. would take months of playing on KBM strictly. Well, the thing is, and I don't know if the way COD is. I don't know if I could handle that. I feel like I would rage. Um. Well, the thing is, is I played Fortnite KBM and Minecraft KBM for months before I switched over to playing KBM. I feel like Minecraft game. would be a good KBM game. It for is. Me. It is a very good game to start because one, um. It, you can put it in peaceful, and you can just learn the movement, learn how to, you know, WASD it, you know? And it doesn't have to be a high-intense situation. I'll give you a big hug, Cash. I want a hug from Tone. My God, man. Go to I'm the, the land duo. New York. I need a hug. Go to the land in New York. Go to the land, and then go to the haunted place after. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. You can miss me on oh, that, my friend. I was also I also said this on stream yesterday. I was gonna talk about it today. Um uh, it's not it's not planned yet, but it is we're in the process of planning it. I just in case I don't return, the podcast will know that I plan to go to a very haunted sanatorium that's close to me soon. Just in case. But interesting times ahead, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's where we're gonna close out the podcast part of this stream though. So thank you oh, guys. We've been going for a minute. Yeah, we have. An hour and twelve minutes is one of our longer podcasts in recent months. Um so thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Um if you're watching this later on, we do stream the podcast every Wednesday at twelve PM EST. Over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Tony's underscore Scorp and twitch.tv forward slash Deception the Rapper. Um, we have live chats, um, as you can see if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but if you guys want to be part of the live chat and ask questions live, uh, please do so if you wish. Um, also, if you guys have any questions for next time that you want us to answer, please feel free to DM us. Our DMs are open on Twitter, Discord literally everywhere where we have social anywhere. media um uh my twitter is tonage underscore scorp and deceptions is deception 276 right yeah sweet and um imagine being the duo why it's saying why it's saying come to the live chat hello future watchers so there's that um but yeah yeah come to the live chat if you want to be the live chat and come say hi to youtube Oh, yeah. Say hi to YouTube if you're here, because this goes everywhere. Say hi to YouTube, and even though they'll never know that you existed unless I watch the stream, say, fictionally say hi to the podcast viewers that listen through audio. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> if you guys did enjoy this podcast, please follow the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the podcast, whatever. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Just, you know, if you guys like the podcast or like us in general um but yeah we will see you guys next week exception do you have any last words um i 
would love to see Cash on Wyatt one v one again because that was really fun to watch. <laughs> I actually podcasted it; it was great. Oh, okay, okay. It was a fun time. They played Modern Warfare S and D. It was. Ooh. It was fantastic. Alrighty, guys. See you guys next time. Peace.